Peace Deep Minds 255 here. What up, what up? So let's start with the first question. What will become of the planet? Because that image of meteor is shown during the uh, coming into the planet, and that's already happening in the second disc, that kind of suggests to me some type of change of events. Because in the original, meteor didn't hit until the game was over right after you beat the game but and this and maybe that could just be a memory but they are suggesting that something might happen to the planet earlier than the original game that's what i'm getting and there'd be no point to just showing the memory if meteor was going to not change the story in some way and it'd be interesting to see what the planet would look like after that so here's some of my ideas about that question, right? Because that image shows media coming to hit the planet, they're gonna probably twist the story maybe by allowing Meter to wipe everybody out except the FF7 crew and allow alien life forms to enter the planet. And before you say that's out there, don't do it. Cause remember the crisis from the sky, Genova did that to the ancients. Or so we think, because there's only two left. But so it's not entirely impossible. They can also cause a new weapon to come forth from the Earth, including the classics. So that's one possibility. Instead of just killing Aerith, the devs might be wiping all of humanity out. Uh, to whatever you want about that, but that would be a huge twist. Another twist they could do with Meteor is instead of wiping out the planet, it could actually reveal that the ancients did actually survive, that Genova didn't wipe them all out, and that there was a small colony of them like living under the earth. And when Meteor hits, it reveals their new location. And there's like this new leader of the ancients, someone equal in power and magnitude to Sephiroth, or maybe even greater this Sephiroth, this, this mysterious shadow we're not gonna know about, that would be pretty interesting. And that could add a new villain and add a, a new thing to the series. I really think that part three is gonna be this open universe type of situation. Another twist they could do with Meter is instead of wiping out the planet and instead of staying on the earth, because they do have SIDS, so they can build a rocket, they're gonna have to go out into space and find all of these materials or all of this energy or some type of source that allows them to restart humanity or they just start traveling to different planets. And in that way, the third game would be called Final Fantasy VII Universe because now the seven, because we really love the game, we love the story, but we also love the characters and they can do all types of creative things with that. And uh, with they like kind of like Final Fantasy XIV, where they have the extra NPCs and they are the main story, except that'll be Cloud, Sephiroth, Zack, Tifa, Ares, Barrett, Minaki, Vincent, Sid, Yuffie, and crew uh, traveling the universe, and your created character travels along with them. And now we have a permanent uh, Final Fantasy game, which I would take. I'll be happy with that. All right. Let's look at the second question. What is Sephiroth's endgame? When Final Fantasy VII ended, it was clear that there was more than one Sephiroth. Um, game Rant put out this statement. The four types of Sephiroth that appear in the game are an illusion, only Cloud can see, a black hooded man, black hood, that looks like Sephiroth, a flashback version, and an unknown existence that Cloud and the others perceive as Sephiroth. The translation of Final Fantasy VII Remake Ultimadia elaborates on exactly when each of these forms appear, and one of them appears to have knowledge of future events, and is probably actually the Sephiroth from the original game further down the timeline. It's also pretty clear that Eri knows what's going on. Now we really get, so when we ask this question, what is Sephiroth's endgame, maybe we might want to ask which Sephiroth's endgame. I'm going to assume that what I like to refer to as Edge of Creation Sephiroth is the Sephiroth they're talking about. So to do that, let's go back and look at the clip from the original game. 
So one of the first things Sephiroth says, careful now, that which lies before us has not happened. So Sephiroth's end game is clearly toward a future time. And this future time has reference to the world being wrapped up with it, whatever it is. Sephiroth next says, our world will become part of it one day, but I will not end and I will not have you in. So at least two points we have lore-wise based on the ending of Final Fantasy VII Remake is that Sephiroth wants him and Cloud to continue. Also, there appears to be some type of destiny that Sephiroth wants Cloud to help him defy, so that's another one. And maybe it's kind of like an avid children thing, or um, kind of like what they showed in the Smash Brothers trailer. As long as Cloud's memory holds Sephiroth, Sephiroth will never end, and maybe that's one reason why. And maybe he has other people in mind, but we're not sure about that. That's just what he says. So, you know, and this doesn't have to be too, if you watched Fairy Tale, the anime, um, everyone trying to figure out why the, that the black wizard was so scared of Angolia and why he wanted to have this power to go back in time was because he was terrified that Angolia would torture him for all eternity. Well, is it possible that Sephiroth's existence is uh, that Sephiroth just wants to survive? Isn't it possible that Sephiroth just wants to survive? I don't think it has to be deeper than that. Another thing to consider with Sephiroth is, which I, again, with Sephiroth, whoever's talking, I think it's Cloud, says in the Rebirth trailer that Sephiroth wants to take back his rightful uh, place as the ruler of the planet with Genova at his side. But then why ask that question? <laughs> right? What is Sephiroth's endgame? That suggests to me that maybe Cloud is confused and he's not right on this one. Right? Or they're thinking about uh, you know that this is this is not Sephiroth's true purpose. Um, and maybe be a twist that Sephiroth is actually trying to save the planet. Because based on whatever it is, the edge of creation, uh, Sephiroth doesn't, wants to be a part of that. Now this third question, what is fact? What is fiction? So in answering this question, we consider that in Final Fantasy VII Remake, in the ending, Aerith makes it very clear that Sephiroth is the threat to the planet, that he's the greatest threat to the planet. So the developers know that we know this. Why are they asking us what is Sephiroth's endgame then? They're asking this because Ares knows that that Sephiroth that was there was actually the unknown existence that's represented as Sephiroth. So we don't know what Sephiroth's actual in-game is because the remake shows the unknown existence representing Sephiroth's in-game. Another thing about fact and fiction is that we are assuming that Final Fantasy Remake and Rebirth's purpose might be to correct the fiction, the so-called fiction part of FF7. But what if what's taking place and the remake and rebirth is also part of the fiction. And that they'll we'll find out later in the game that it's uh it's mixing back and forth between both the original game and this one. They can really play with our heads. Ultimately, I think it's just the devs having power to retcon the story without too much complaint. This is Deep Mind 255 out.